What is going on, guys? Welcome back to episode 23 of Real Estate Served on the Rocks. As always, I am Jameson Amaros, and I am here with my two cohorts, Charlie Sardelli, Oscar Ibarra. And if you guys have never been a part of this channel or seen the channel, I want to give you guys a rundown of what we do and why we do it. Uh, we are a real estate based podcast that is geared directly to you guys, the consumer, to answer any and all questions, whether they're hot topic issues, news articles, things that we think can help you in your real estate journey when it comes to buying, selling, renting, investing, et cetera. Um, we came up with this podcast because we were sitting around drinking whiskey, as you see here mm -hmm. in, uh, in front of camera, and realized that you know we, we, we know some things and we wanted to, to have a good way to bring it to you guys, the public and just really provide value. Um, we, we don't ask you guys to use us as real estate agents. We'd obviously love to, um, to help mm -hmm. you guys if you're in I'll the state you. of Colorado. <laughs> Please use me as your real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the goal is to arm you guys with as much information as possible and make you guys, uh, or allow you guys to have the right tools to ask the right questions and make sure that your journey, whether it's buying a house, selling a house, investing, is as smooth as possible. Um, we are three Colorado realtors again through yeah. Fathom Realty, mm -hmm. and uh, we're here to help out, and we also drink some whiskey. That's right. We do we review it reviews every, is, every week. Every single this episode. isn't a TED Talk, guys. We like to have a little bit of fun, but get, yeah. get the best information we can out yeah. of yep. So we drop our audio pretty much every Friday and our video every uh, between Monday and Wednesday, so make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel to get all the notifications for when we drop our episodes. Yep. And the channel, easy to find on YouTube. It's Living in Colorado, The Mile High Perspective. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to get a hold of us via the phone number, 303 578 0263. If you want to reach us via email, it's R E S O T R at the mile high perspective.com. And like Charlie said, podcast drops on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, mm -hmm. all your major streaming platforms. You can find us every Friday. Uh, come hang out with us. It's funny, grab, man. Grab I never would have and, and relax. Never would have thought Hup day you know, every like Wednesday. Never, never we're in thought here. Those I'd, I'd be sitting on some of those like, yeah, we're on Apple podcast, Spotify and everything. It's, it's, well, it's I knew cool. once I turned 30 that I had to pick Something. <laughs> Something. And for me, it was smoking meat and starting a podcast. Ooh, ooh. Notice hmm. how he said meat. It's Colorado, meat. smoking meat. I thought he was going to say weed, but okay, it's right? meat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, on, on, on the YouTube, just search uh, the Mile High pr Perspective. That's the easiest thing. Yeah. yeah. I, that, mm -hmm. yep. Subscribe so you don't have to search it every time. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, guys, this week's episode is, is timely, right? Like Jameson said, we, we do this every week. So luckily, we're able to kind of catch things as they're coming out. And this is a... Uh, I think I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna coin this the Tucker Jabs episode. It is, um, uh, yeah. It's, it, it'll be fun. <laughs> it, it's 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 so interesting to me, man. And you know, we talk about it all the time, right? How now we're so influenced by news headlines and 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 all these things that pop up on our social medias, and it's crazy to me that how reactionary we are. Oh yeah. Well, right? and, and and like to me, it's just like meh. History repeats itself, mm -hmm. but now with the internet and social media, it gives a a, a soapbox just platform to any little thing. Yeah. Not only that, I think it also any has allowed people to repackage mm -hmm. the same shit over and over but again. But with that said, that platform gives very, it, yes. it, 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 your audience is huge and you could you could put Anybody. out their crap and pe yep. people are going to believe it. Again, mm -hmm. history repeats itself. There was something similar to back in the day. It's not the same and that's what we're going to talk yeah, about. And we're going to, so... Overall today, guys, the topic that we're going to address is the LLPA changes. The, mm -hmm. This big thing that you see where Biden's going to charge me, somebody who's done good credit, and I got a good down payment. I'm going to pay more than these people who can't do that? Charlie just uh, transported himself back to North Carolina. Uh, I'm sorry, because that no, that's, that's what it is. And I, and I apologize to put any kind of a, a label on it, but at the same time, that's what you see a lot of, is people who are ignorant overall see these nude he news headlines and they react and go your Biden's doing this and you know and I go to that because South Park said it the best it took her jabs watch the episode great reference well, and, to what and, we're talking about and we say ignorant in, in the very in the most gentle way yeah I mean in, we're, we're, way. you know endearing way I mean it's um it could be it could go either way ignorance could be bliss but you know you mm -hmm. don't do this every day and you have every right to be upset when you hear something that you don't understand. Absolutely. And, and we're here to clarify that, hopefully give you some, some peace of mind mm -hmm. that this, the world's not ending and it's just something that shifts and happens. Yeah, so what we're going to do been today, guys, for a while. is we're going to go through, and I want to get two kind of unique perspectives, right? Uh, Charlie over here to my right uh, has done a deep dive on LLPAs or, if you guys are listening, loan level price adjustments, which have been in effect for 
since 2008, essentially. Yeah. There's just now They're changes. Forever. They're just, changes. They, they, they just them, look right? different back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. So we're going to get his, his, uh, his hyperactive idea on, on what's going on, <laughs> his opinion. Yep. And then we have Oscar uh, to Charlie's right, who obviously has been on both sides of the coin from the mm-hmm. lending standpoint back in 2008, the real estate standpoint now. So I wanna, we want to give you guys a really good idea of what it means to us Mm -hmm. as real estate professionals that see it every day and how it potentially will affect you guys, whether you're looking to buy or sell a house from a fee standpoint. And I think you guys will be surprised. So pay attention for the whole episode. You guys will be surprised at what our take is. Yeah. Um, And I think, I hope anyway, that you'll come out of this with a better understanding and not a fight or flight reaction less, to less what's happening. Well, no, I mean, even so, if, hey, if you want to react, put it in the comments. Yep. We would love to talk about it with you, you know, at the end of the day, again, this is what yeah, we if you do. Yeah, if you guys want to fight, let's go, <laughs> right? Like, but, but this I'm is too why tired we do to fight. It, right? mm. This is a, and the reason that, you know, we want to do this topic, like we said, is because this is a perfect example of why we do this podcast. Yes. Because this is something that's related to the real estate market that people see a headline and they, they start freaking out. They don't know what's going on. So, and again, guys, I'm not a top economist. I'm not, you know, a financial advisor, but I have the world of information in the palm of my hands. And let me tell you, over the last two days, I have done over eight hours of research into this topic. And, to and this goes this. back. Um, we use 2008 as a reference point because that's when, mm-hmm. you know, excuse my language, but shit hit the fan, you know, and we went into a recession. But mm-hmm. the, 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 the topic we're talking about today goes further back. I mean, mm-hmm. I've, been, I've been doing this since 2001, and um, it was right after the refinance boom. Yep. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. this topic hit then. Absolutely. And then it hit again in 2004. It, so it's been, it's been going on forever. This well, isn't the first time it happens. And yeah. I, didn't, I didn't do a deep dive like, like Charlie. I'm just going to go back and <laughs> deep dive into the archives of my brain well no uh, i was out i was actually he's at gonna the marty mcfly it and just go <laughs> yeah. back to the future i was at the nuggets happen. last night so i didn't have time to do a deep dive into this but i, I will let you know Which, that bro I, they almost blew it they, we mm. almost did mm. i was at the edge of my seat i was almost oh it. my god well and in all honesty for me the reason that i deep dove into it is honestly the reason i get a lot of information in general is just because one of my really good friends um reached out to me shout out and uh he basically was like hey man is this is this going to lead us back into 2008? It looks like they're allowing people who don't have money to borrow, to borrow money. And isn't that what got us into this? Right. right. And so I wanted to address it because, again, mm-hmm. it's scary when you, when you look at the headlines, when you look at things that are being said. People are, people are all going to start watching the, what's the that movie? The Big Short. Yeah, yep. The Big Short, right? which I still haven't watched. We'll, we'll do a viewing party. Maybe we'll just do that. Ooh, that'd be good. Yeah, like right? a reaction. Yeah. Like, what the fuck were they doing Three real back estate then? agents react Oh, my God. What the, the fuck short. are they doing? Oh, my God. That was allowed? What the fuck are they I'm doing? I'm going to be watching and be like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I did it. <laughs> I also got paid those bonuses. Well, and again, <laughs> no, I wasn't wow. paid bonuses. You know what I just realized? This episode is very much sponsored by, or or brought up brought up by like my 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 close friends because today we're drinking. I thought you were gonna say bang. I was like, please bang, <laughs> sponsor me. I drink a lot of bang. But, so I had a I had a buddy um, bring over some uh, Woodford Reserve, and the reason that I I like to to bring it on the show is because. This is something that when people think bourbon, especially when you don't really know a lot of bourbon, when you go into a bar and you ask for a good bourbon, a good, a good drink, this is a lot of the time what bartenders will provide you with, and it's a staple in people's minds, right? You see Woodford Reserve and you go, oh yeah, that's, that, that, that's a bourbon, I know that one. As much as I, I love Woodford Reserve, I mean, Wood, again, coming up, Kentucky Derby. When I, when I see mm-hmm. Woodford Reserve, I think Kentucky Derby, I think mint juleps, this bourbon, lends itself well for old fashions and everything else and you could just drink it straight it's a great bourbon i've had it plenty of times mm-hmm. my only gripe with this is that bars and restaurants do hold it in so high regard that it's yes. very top shelf mm-hmm. um and you could buy this at, at the liquor store for a, a reasonable price it's a great bourbon like charlie said it's yeah. it's really good it's i can't i don't have any bad things to say about it yeah so i'm excited to do this review on it because this is that that again for people who watch this that are trying to get into bourbons and learn more about it. This is a perfect example. What was the cost to, of it? Uh, I so it's like 49, 49 bucks? Something yeah. like that. But yeah, I mean, for, it's for somewhere me, between 40 and maybe 60 bucks. Yeah, I mean, for us, it was free. Cause shout out Zeke. Thank you. Free? Thank you. 99. <laughs> free 99. My favorite price. Thank you, um, Zeke. But yeah, so, so I'm, I'm excited Earns to drink a spot it. on the podcast. And what's really cool for me about it is like, I remember when I was first getting into bourbon, I told you guys a story about it. I remember I like, again, Woodford. Oh wow. Top shelf. This is good stuff. I remember I tried it. And I had that initial reaction of ah, just burned. Like, why? Why do people want to drink this? I, I, don't, I don't understand this. But I will say we cracked it again. Got to get rid of the neck pour. And, and, and it's very interesting to me how it 
changed. You know, like mm-hmm. I remember the experience. I was scared of this bottle. Like oh, mentally, yeah. I saw this and I was like, I don't want to drink this, uh, right? But now, now again, 22 bourbons in. Yep. Wow. The, the ability for your brain to adapt. And it's funny how, you know, it, you have to acquire a taste. You hear that all the time. The, I, it was like it snapped in my head and I was like, holy shit, I've acquired a taste. He's like, I'm there. Yeah, I am I've there. acquired a taste for bourbon. <laughs> Before I forget, your buddy Zeke, Zeke, right? Thanks for the bottle. Any of the listeners or viewers out there, if you guys want to give us a bottle of review, I'm not going to say no. Yeah, right, right. I love it. Bring it on. We appreciate you guys for, for, for being a part of the show If you want to send us a us, bottle, right? we love, we'd love to taste it. <laughs> um, so, Oscar, you said that you had a little bit of a, a background on Woodford. So, 1812 was uh, the start of Woodford Reserve. They have this big compound. You know, you could do tours. It's one of the Wasn't bigger. was there a war back then? Maybe the of, war of 1812. <laughs> I was never the so back to you. Back to I turned 30 and I started smoking meats. It's like I think the 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 saying goes once you smoke meats, drink bourbon or or, or read or, history books. Yeah, <laughs> pick up your 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 you become a history buff. Start a podcast, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I I started. Luckily, I smoked my brisket stuff. while drinking Golf. bourbon with a small history book in my right hand. Yes. Oh, look at you, so Ambition. sophisticated. Pretty, uh, very cultural. Oh, <laughs> you think you're so better than us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. You now have to do the entire episode with your pinky up. So, it's uh, the, the mash bill is 92% corn, 18% rye, malted barley. Uh, the nose is dried fruits, hints of mint, orange covered with a dusting of cocoa. Ooh, a dusting. Um, and that's the nose. Dusting. That's what we'll be smelling. The taste, re- uh, reach, reach. I, I, it threw me off because what I'm gonna say, it, it, the word creamy is in here again. <laughs> nope. so it, just, there it, is. it just it just threw me the hell off. I can read, I promise. Uh, the taste is rich, I can read. rich, chewy, rounded, and smooth with complex citrus, cinnamon, and uh, cocoa, toffee, caramel, chocolate, and spice notes. Um, the finish is silky smooth, almost creamy at first, with uh, along with warm, satisfying. Tail, talk about the flavor. Oh, sorry, I was reading my own notes. Man, it was a long <laughs> night. It was a long night at the at the, the teleprompter. No, the I wanted, was running a yeah, little Yeah, no, no. I wanted to talk about the uh, because they do have a. Fl- I am a sissy boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like uh, wrong burgundy. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, San Diego. No, uh, the flavor will. They have a flavor will, and okay. I know we, we brought it up in the past. And for the the beginner bourbon bourbon drinkers, mm-hmm. it's a great it's a great yeah. way to kind of pull the the flavors and the notes from yeah. the bourbon. So I, that's why I wrote it in here. But with that said, let's taste this bad boy. Um, I did taste chocolate at, at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still not going to taste the creamy shit. Well, it, <laughs> and, and again, cheers, boys. Just knocked JC right off the table. Nah, right sorry, JC. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the fruit notes and the... Yeah. Is, is it, is it a, the nose or the bouquet? The bouquet is wine right yeah i mean but that's the the whole right then bouquet is the same it's Uh, the same shit i'm definitely getting more of the sweet more of the more of the toffee and the caramel on the nose than the the botanicals yep Mm -hmm. but again i'm addicted to chocolate so maybe that's just yeah did you have your reese's cup today hey i've been on a cut my man three weeks without it oh my god we're on wow we're doing it doing it commitment baby how long how long we got uh, another two weeks. So in so in two episode, weeks you're gonna be gone. Episode 27. <laughs> you're you're gonna be like the. I'm cookie bringing monster. in a whole no, I, bucket. I got I got to be honest with you. When when Alicia and I went to Vegas those two weeks ago, I ate enough chocolate for a small elementary school. You were like a woman weekend. on the period. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and it's uh, legitimately. I, she's like, Charlie, that's like your fifth Reese cup today. What are you doing? I was like, Look, I'm just trying to get. I know I got a cut when I get home, so I'm just trying to get to the point where I don't want chocolate. By the time I get home, didn't work. I, I still want chocolate, but I'm doing good. It's the discipline. Got to got to lock I'm it not, in. Right? I'm not a sweets person. Same. I just I, I don't sweets don't do it for me. But yeah, the smell the smell on this is definitely um, it's less hot than I ex- expected mm-hmm. it to be, especially after sitting for a while, which I think is is a, is a really good note as to why Woodford is what it I is. I do definitely get the chocolates on the tail. And there's supposed to be some tobacco in there too, but I think the tobacco is so so light in this yeah. that the chocolate and the sweets take over. I, I mean, I smell the fruits in it, the sweet fruits in the nose, uh, but the taste is, is very, it's very chocolate cinnamon-y. cinnamon-y. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the burn's there, but it goes away, it dissipates quickly. Yes, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't go to the back of the no, tongue like we've not. had with the other bourbons. It kind of it stays in the front, mm-hmm. and then you get the chocolate and the vanilla and the caramel yep. undertones on the well, back Well, I was going to say, I think at the beginning, that's when I the get more of that tinge. At the end. Yeah, mm-hmm. I get more of the tinge from the, from the floral at the beginning, and then as it, as it, as it kind of sits... That's when I start getting, and I will say the complexity is surprising to me, um, especially like I said earlier, is like 
going from taking a sip of this right. and it being just punch me in the face with heat and I don't want it to now it definitely has layers to it and mm -hmm. it, it has a process behind it. So, I mean, it, just as a, like I said, as, as a bottle that you see in, in most bars, it makes sense. I, I feel like this could be very palatable for, for most people yeah. Who, are, yeah. who are either drinking bourbon or getting into bourbon. And, it's and like the Camry of bourbons. Ooh. Yeah. Or the Civic. Absolutely. 100%. Or the, it's good. It's reliable. Yeah, but like a Type R. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not like a standard Civic. Yeah, like it's got right. some room, room to it okay. a little bit. I like it. But you're not going to race it up against a Corvette. Yep. But when you're sitting in it, you mm -hmm. feel cool. And this is uh, 45 proof. I believe. Um, so 45%. 45%, yeah. 90 proof. 90 90, proof. 90, 90 point something proof. Mm -hmm. And the complexity is good. Um, you know, it, it does, it kind of evolves if you think about mm -hmm. it when, when you're drinking it. Yep. Um, you know, it lingers and then you have some flavors and then it goes on and you drink in and then the, after, yeah. the aftertaste, it's all there. I like it. Cool. Well, like uh, the taste lingers, so does public sentiment when they read uh, mm. news articles. Mm. So we're going we're gonna to jump in. And um, what I want to do is I want to kind of structure it first. And I'm going to start with Oscar. Mm -hmm. And Oscar, if you could just kind of walk us through what an LLPA is, how it gets determined, why it even matters. Because I think there's a big misconception, and we'll talk about this as we go through, that mm -hmm. the loan level price adjustment is also somehow factored into monthly payment and interest rates and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So can you just kind of walk us through what a loan level price adjustment is, why they exist? Um, you give us a good backstory because obviously it came after the, the great financing or refinancing boom. Um, what, what, what is it? Why does it matter? So when you go in, you tell your store to the bank, um, you're going to give them your credit. You're going to give them your assets, um, income, all that stuff. Depending on where that range is, they're going to price you up. Right, mm -hmm. your um, your liability levels are either going to be high or very low, and that's when you get your interest rate. Uh, what the general public doesn't know, um, and and again, I've been out of lending since 2010, nine, somewhere around there. Eight was really when we when I started, but um, there's a there's a back end to that. Back in the day, we we had um, what was called the yield spread, and I don't mm -hmm. know if they still do that. So the bank would, um, I was a broker, so the bank would say, look, this is a par rate. That means you're not going to make any back-end money from us because the bank would pay us to, to sell interest yeah. rates. Mm -hmm. So um, the par yield, your, your yield spread was one rate, right? Let's call it a 6%. Now, if um, if I sold a 6 and an eighth, 6.125, I would get paid maybe a quarter point in the back or a half point. And what a lot of uh, mortgage brokers like to do back in the day was charge a point up front. That means 1% of your originated loan, um, and then the bank would pay you 1%. Mm -hmm. So whatever that was, what the general public was going to get, let's call it a six and a half. So, you know, if you really wanted to go in there, you maybe charge a point and a half up front and then give them a, a 6%, you would make money on the back. Um, so there, there was that grid, right? And then that kind of morphed into the LLPA now. Um, depending on the credit, the, the credit of, of the borrower, um, you know, that, that's what kind of dictated your, your interest rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you had, um, uh, uh, the underwriting process, uh, wants to see a full, a full loan. Yep. Um, they want to see credit. They want to see assets, income, and how strong you are, a mm -hmm. strong of a buyer. Um, if one of those things are missing, then that's when you, the adjustment starts, right? Uh, your credit's not that good. Your assets aren't that great. Your credit is great. You know, that, that might, that the credit's always been your, your saving, your saving grace when it comes to lending. Mm -hmm. Um, now, uh, a, a, a complete full loan package is everything. Um, back in the day, we had subprime lending and also uh, interest, interest only, all that stuff. And your credit could give you a loan. Mm -hmm. It didn't even matter if you had a job, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that as an example as why we're not gonna go back to 2008. That doesn't exist anymore, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. And, so and what what the LLPA is doing now is just allowing someone that doesn't have the greatest credit to survive out there. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and so just to kind of summarize it a little bit, what the LLPA is, is kind of a, a chart, right? That you start at, let's say a, a 580 credit score and it goes all the way up to 780, 800, whatever it be, right? And as you're increasing through those credit scores, there's different um, levels of interest that are charged or, or percent points that are charged, um, depending on where you well, sit. So I talked about yield spread. Now it's yep. fees, right? Yes. That, it's it's going to cost you, mm -hmm. the, the consumer. They, yes. they did away with the yield spread, but um, and now it's going to cost the consumer an amount. And yep. that's that's what that's what we're talking about. And the, the amount structure on that is dependent on 
your your credit score, right? Um, so, and, and what what we're seeing is based on you know that table and what Oscar just described with LLPAs is now people in a bracket between 720 to 780. There, what you're seeing in the headline is if you have good credit and you put 20 percent down you're going to be paying more and you're subsidizing and helping these people with lower credit scores, right? That's what we see well, in, the, and let's, in the news. Let's clarify. So when you say that people are paying more, mm -hmm. what do you mean and where does that cost show up? So basically what, what I mean by they're paying more is in, in the points that, that you get when you apply for, for the loan, mm -hmm. right? So if you look at the chart that they put out um, according to the LLPA change, what you're going to see is that you know, if you're at a 720 or a 780, if you look over, you're going to be at maybe a 0.75 right mm -hmm. now, or uh, maybe maybe below below one, let's say, yep. right? So basically, your credit score, if you have a good credit score, it makes that number lower, which in turn allows you to pay less over time based on your based on your, your interest, right? And or that's, less in closing costs. Yes, or less in closing costs. Um, and and the reason that I say it like that is because the major news article that came out around this was. If you have a $400,000 loan, you're going to pay an extra $40 a month for your, for your, for your home. And over time, it's going to cost you $14,000, right? And, and that's what everybody latched on to back in January when that article came out. Yeah. $14,000, the till, the truth in lending, oh, that's the scary one because well, and it's I think the, hundreds the, of thousands of dollars. The big thing that I want, I want you guys to understand is like when we're talking about the loan level price adjustments, mm -hmm. right? Like Oscar said, if you're, let's say, I think rates let's call them 6.75 right mm -hmm. now ish 6.55 I think is the average right yeah. well that's your rate for your amortized loan on a mortgage over 30 years what the bank charges you to get that rate is based on a number of factors it's yep. based on your credit score mm -hmm. it's based on your debt to income it's based on the occupancy type whether it's a primary residence or whether it's a uh, investment standpoint yep. um and then the last thing it's obviously based on the loan to value right mm -hmm. if i'm going to borrow more or less against the value of the home 75 percent, or in other words how much down you're going to put exactly that is now going to say okay that 6.75 percent or 6.55 percent is going to cost you at the closing table mm -hmm. 7500 dollars, yep. whatever that looks like mm -hmm. right and as prior to may may one mm -hmm. as your credit score is higher and your down payment is higher therefore your loan to value is lower that closing cost is going to decrease. Yep. After May 1st, now it's going to increase depending on the different scenarios. So, and I saw that same article. It's like, oh, it's, you're gonna, it's $40 extra a month. Really, it's weird because they're just taking your closing costs yes. and then spreading it out over the t loan terms. Mm -hmm. When in reality, you're not, for all intent and purpose, your, your loan amount is not going to change as far as the, the monthly payment, yes. right? Because mm -hmm. that's based on your interest rate. Mm -hmm. And loan level price adjustments have nothing to do with interest rate. Yep, That's, that's a misconception. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. It's based on the cost to get that specific rate. Exactly. Now, if you have less down, you may get a higher rate, a lower rate if you have more down, or if you mm -hmm. can put some of your money and your, li your, your liquidity into a down payment, yep. then those things can change. But just in and of itself, Loan level price adjustments aren't going to affect your monthly payment. They're going to affect mm -hmm. what you pay at closing. Yep. And the controversy is if you're a higher qualified buyer with a mm -hmm. higher credit score, higher down payment, you're going to pay more than you would have prior to May 1. Yes. And, and the other thing that I want to point out here, guys, is these LLPAs change year over year. Correct. Right? So this isn't, this isn't something that is set in stone. And you see, unfortunately... And or new. Yeah, and, and or new. But unfortunately, what we see is the, our political system here, and we're going we're gonna to keep politics out of this, but our political system here has become such a socially driven machine, right? That stuff like this gets used in a political sphere. Well, yeah, because anybody, anywhere, at any time can have any opinion they ever want and put it on a pedestal like Oscar said. Exactly. And, and the thing, guys, Like us, is, right now. Uh, hey. <laughs> hey. Um, you know, lending is a business. Mm -hmm. You know, and they got to restructure and they, they got to uh, evolve and adjust as we go. Mm -hmm. And this is just another adjustment because, you know, the banks are, they're feeling it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the rates mm -hmm. are, are high because they need to make more money back. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, times are changing. So it's going to change. Mm -hmm. It's nothing new. It's just a business. It is a business decision. Yep. It kind of levels the playing field. Um, FHA is there. FHA has mm -hmm. always been there. And that's one of the vehicles that you use when you don't have perfect credit. Yep. You you don't have perfect work history mm -hmm. and 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 
quite frankly, as of January, they, they adjusted the mortgage insurance. And so yep. that right there is mm -hmm. kind of an LLPA in itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're adjusting stuff to level the playing field because it's, it's tougher mm -hmm. for someone to get a loan and the banks need, need people to get loans yep. so, to survive. Uh, Charlie, mm -hmm. question to you then. Yep. So these loan level price adjustments, I know Oscar just said the uh, mortgage insurance went down, right? And that was on yep. FHAs. But these new changes May 1st, do they affect FHA, VA loans? No. Right. No, not they at don't. all. And, and the interesting part, when you, when you start looking at, at those, those um, mortgage interest rates, right, or, or mortgage, um, excuse me, insurance rates, yes, they adjusted for, for FHAs, but here's the other thing. Everybody, everybody that's up in arms going, oh, there's socialism. We're, we're, we're subsidizing for these poor people to get it. They don't deserve it because they didn't work as hard as me. Look, guys, I get it. 100% I get it. And you have every right to feel that way. I won't take that away from you. But what you have to recognize is with these adjustments, it's not all across the board. It's not, it's not black and white in a lot of circumstances, right? So just as an example, to give, to, just to, to kind of quell the thought that anybody below me is getting a better deal and, and they didn't work as hard. To, to quell that, you got to realize, too, that not only are, yes, they're going to be paying a little bit lower in that percentage to, to that, mm -hmm. that goes towards it. But the mortgage, the mortgage insurance premiums didn't change right. for those people with low credit scores, yes. right? Yes. So yes, you're at a 640, your you're, MI is going to be exactly. So it's not, it's not like they're saying, hey, here's this adjustment. Now everybody's going to boom into the market and everybody right. has equal opportunity. That's not what it's going to be because now that they've introduced these lower levels to, to the people with 620s. Now mortgage insurance is even more liable, mm -hmm. right? So now think about the adjustment that's going to happen, and we're already seeing it, where these people with these 620 credit scores are almost going to be offset right. by these changes the higher, yes. with the mortgage insurance premiums. Quite frankly, if, if you have stellar credit and you're a good borrower, you're mm -hmm. still going to come out on top. Yep. Yeah, well, and 100%. that's another thing that I wanted to point out, right? And if you guys, please, please look at the chart. If you don't understand the, the heat map of the LLPAs, and I'll put it up on the screen here for a second. If you don't understand this, reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to kind of walk you through it or put you in contact with, with our amazing lender partners that we have. Shout out to Colin Keenan again and, and Devin Rice for me. Mm -hmm. I spent a good amount of time on the phone with them the last couple of days just, again, trying to lock this information in and yep. get different, d different viewpoints on it, right? Um, and, and the other thing for me that, that, I, that I really want to want to address with this is if you have good credit, if you put a higher down payment down and you look at this heat map, there are scenarios where you will still be getting a whole 1%, if not 2% better of that, of that percentage than somebody with a 620, 640 rate, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, if you want to break it down and go brass tacks, if you have higher good credit and you're putting a higher down payment down, are you going to be paying more at this moment? Yes, absolutely. And, and again, I mean, I may be talking out of my butt, but it is a business. Exactly. So we want the banks to have more loans mm -hmm. because guess what? Maybe they'll loosen up a bit. Yeah, we, yeah. Don't want, we don't want all the loans they give consolidated to one type of consumer. Yeah, it's because if they loosen because, up, when I say loosen up, right. maybe rates will drop. Well, dude, yeah. and here's, here's the other thing, right? And this is, there's the two points I want to make. Number one, uh, let me give you guys a specific scenario. Do it. Because, again, the, the overall theme I keep hearing from people is, if I have worked hard and built my credit and saved for a down payment, I'm going to pay more than somebody who didn't mm -hmm. do those same things. And my more is going to subsidize that person. Wrong. That is not the case. Here Wrong. is a very specific example. Okay. Two buyers. Buyer number one is a 659 credit score. And they've got to call it 20% down. Mm -hmm. Let's just say. Okay. They, prior to May 1, would pay a 2.75% fee mm -hmm. on the loan. So 2.75% of a loan, mm -hmm. okay? So call it a $300,000 loan, right? After May 1, they pay a 1.5%, mm -hmm. okay? What that equates to essentially is that closing cost-wise, you're gonna pay thirty-seven dollars to $3,800 less mm -hmm. after May 1st than you would have before May 1st, which just means as a buyer, as a mm -hmm. borrower, I now don't have to come up out of pocket with as much as I would have well, previously, and that's right? A, yeah, exactly, and that's, and that's, yes, that's exactly the point I was driving towards. So here's the second scenario. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a buyer 740. I've got 25% down. Prior to May 1, I would have paid 0.275% of the full loan. Yep. Okay. You guys can do the math. My phone's recording me, so I can't do it. And I'm not Rain Man, but 0.275%, <laughs> less than a percent of the loan you would have paid 
in fees to get whatever the rate is at 740 with 25% down. He's not Rain Man, but he's a walking thesaurus. Now, <laughs> after May 1st, mm-hmm. that 0. 0.275 whew, goes Hold on, guys. 0. 0.375. Oh, my God. We're talking a tenth of mm-hmm. a percent mm-hmm. on that same loan, which means you are getting penalized this much yep. for having more in order to help other individuals mm-hmm. get subsidized. And, the, and, there's, and, and the, this is my second point. Mm-hmm. Be, by doing that, what we're doing is we are trying to stimulate the housing market. Yes. And everybody that's watching this, that's listening to this, the people I've talked to, the number mm-hmm. one thing I keep hearing is affordability, housing prices are out of control, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Okay? Well, if we only cater to the people that have 30% down 760 credit scores and make $300,000 a year to buy houses, guess what's going to happen? You just pushed out 75% of the market. Not only that, but you're (laughs) going to increase home prices based on comps, Mm -hmm. right? We need to get to a point where the lower income, not as credit worthy borrowers that are still, by the way, paying $1,900 a month of rent here yep. in Denver, Colorado. And the cheap just, side. Just fine. 2000 excuse me. 2000. 2000, 2000 <laughs> right? And now we are allowing them to get into the homes that are on the lower mm-hmm. price point band that are not going to drive up home prices yep. and allow them to stimulate the economy because the economy goes to the housing market. Well, hey, and you hey. want that because if you're, if you're upscaling in home, Who's going to buy your house? Exactly. It brings an, yeah. it brings more so buyers to the buyer pool. Nobody's there to buy it because yeah. I gotta, this guy's got to come out nine thousand dollars out of pocket in closing costs. Mm-hmm. Well, if I save him four grand, is he going to come to the table? Yes. Okay, I'll sell my yep. house, take my it's going to thirty seven percent equity that I gained over the last two years, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go buy something else. And yep. again, I'm going to use the term loosely as your liability to the bank, mm-hmm. right? And in your case, it's case by case, and the more money down, that's I think that's a bigger factor than mm-hmm. your credit score yeah if absolutely. you have if that because the bank your credit score gets you so much mm-hmm. but if you're borrowing less money from me you're you're less likely to walk away from this Correct. investment mm-hmm. exactly. that i'm about to make mm-hmm. so it's you're still liability to the bank and if you have more down payment it, they loosen up a bit i don't care how stellar your credit is if you don't have the down payment mm-hmm. you're still going to jump through a few hoops yep well i mean and, and not only that it's also you know on the note of on the note of, oh, we're paying more. What what happened, guys? What happened last year to the LLPAs for people who were buying second homes and or doing a cash out refi? What happened there? I don't know, Charlie. You tell us. You went, you burned the midnight oil on this one. <laughs> they, their rates jumped significantly last year. Where were you all then, right? And and I understand. Well, I can, I can tell Charlie's you why. calling you guys <laughs> out. Listen, I am. Listen, no, that's I all, am. Charlie. But here here it is, right? And this is this is human nature. I'm mm-hmm. going to go off on a little bit of a tangent, but you guys have to understand something. If you are trying to affect change in somebody, right? Like an Mm -hmm. individual, okay? The easiest and most effective way to do it is to do something that directly affects that person. Mm -hmm. And what these loan level price adjustments are doing based on the headlines is, I, the US government, am affecting your wallet. And now all of a sudden everybody's in arms. To your point, Mm -hmm. last year, if I'm not somebody that buys a second home, Mm -hmm. I don't fucking care. Yeah. So it's not a big deal. Exactly. Although those people that were buying second homes mm-hmm. with really cheap money did affect your wallet. You just didn't know it because it was stretched out over 30 years mm-hmm. because that is what drove home prices up. But there was not an outcry. And, and yep. it's not a juicy t- topic. So exactly. you didn't but hear now, about it. Yeah. If it turns into hardworking American citizens are subsidizing for not hard. It's bullshit. Yeah, it just, it, it, it is guys. I'm sorry. You're getting, it's you're fucking getting bullshit. played. You're getting it's played bullshit. to click on it, give them views, g- give them whatever. Please, again, and I've said it on multiple podcast episodes, you have a world and a wealth of information in your pocket. Most people have it in their homes. Go ask chat GPT. <laughs> yeah, he'll tell you. Like, go, go, do, <clears throat> go do it. Don't just yep. react, right? Absolutely. And, and the reason that I brought up the last year's with, with, with that mm-hmm. pricing well, adjustment. React, but react with knowledge. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. But, but the reason I brought up last year, not only to say like, hey, where, where were you guys? But at the end of the day, if we're looking at it, everybody has been complaining about People buying up multiple pieces of property. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, these guys who make all the money, they're buying this up and then renting it out for higher prices. Is that happening? Absolutely. But now we just saw the second implementation to try and regulate that in a certain kind of a way. So, and guys, without risk, there's no reward. If you mm-hmm. want to be that guy buying up all multiple properties, call us. I'll yep. show you how to do it. Yep. <laughs> you could be it's that called person. The Bur- it's called the Burr method. We'll go. We'll go find your properties. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, hundred percent. Um, all right. So, Oscar, I want to. I want to transition to you. Oh shit. So, tell me. Okay, and we brought this up in the very beginning of the episode. You touched on it initially. Why is this new adjustment not going to lead us into 2008 again? 
2008, it really, there's a few things, a few factors. One, subprime lending, mm -hmm. which doesn't exist anymore. And so we'll, give, me, yeah. give me a definition of what subprime, subprime lending is. Subprime lending is if you don't have great credit, great work history, we'll work around it. If you have great credit and not great work history, you know, we'll, we'll give you a loan and you're going to pay an interest-only payment, qualify interest-only payment. Um, long story short, they were giving people loans that didn't, didn't have any business getting loans or mm -hmm. were in the wrong vehicle. So, or uh, they weren't, correct me if I'm wrong, they weren't verifying employment? Anything. They weren't yep. verifying there, anything. There were stated income, stated asset loans. Um, so I, I remember, come to you and say, hey, I got a 720 credit score. And you'd be like, genius. Done. And then I can say, you hey, by loan. the way, I make $300,000 a year working at McDonald's. You'd be like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, that, that's, that's basically what the bank did. And they were doing arms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Adjustable rate With mortgages. Balloon payments, yep. Which all of a sudden... Right. And, and again, all these vehicles were put into place with a plan. Mm -hmm. you were, you, they, were, they were called 228s, the subprime. It, that means for two years, the rate was what it was. It, it didn't adjust and nothing happened. That was your payment. After two years, it started adjusting like a mother. Mm -hmm. And there was no cap, correct? No. Correct. Right. So what happened was... Which you, aside, the arms now have a cap. And, and, the, and what's funny is that we're talking about this now. The rates were similar to what they are now. Mm -hmm. A 7% rate, interest only. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and home prices were very low back then. They were like 180 average, 100, well, 200,000. And, and that's another... Uh, sorry to cut you off, Oscar, but that's another point that, because I, I know you're going to go deeper into it, but that's something that I want to point out right now. Notice what Oscar said. You still have to qualify based on current standards. So just, just again, based on what Jameson said, why this won't leave back to 2008, you still have to qualify. You still have to show DTI. You still have to show assets. You still have to get approved by the bank for the loan versus in 2008, it was free range, baby. And, and, and you had a you had a pulse, you had a loan. Yep. So, with uh, there was there was another one that I'll go into. So the two twenty eights, um, the plan was, and a lot of lenders didn't, was to follow up with the client. In those two years, you rectified your credit. Mm -hmm. You had two years on the on the job force, and then uh, at you know day two of when your loan was going to adjust, you have a full month to refinance. Mm -hmm. You refinance now, you have better. Uh, everything right so you got out of the the 228 and then you went into a 30-year fix that wasn't happening mm -hmm. the lenders there was so much action so much stuff going on lenders were too busy or just didn't give a shit mm -hmm. and then people went crazy because your payment at twelve hundred dollars with an interest only payment mm -hmm. which you didn't buy down your principal jumped up to two grand mm -hmm. for your average household yep. that was a lot yep so all that started happening there was a um there was a few banks that offered what was called an option arm mm -hmm. that it gave you five different options. They gave you your, your minimum payment, which was a negative amortization. That means that instead of paying down your principal, Pay down you were interest. adding to it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it was ridiculously low. Kind of like and a reverse mortgage almost. Almost. Yep. And then you had your interest only. So it stayed stagnant, but it was also a cheap option. And your 30-year fix, your 15-year, and no, it was four. Yep. So those were your options every month. Mm -hmm. So that product was for your savvy investor. You know, this month or next month, I'm going to allocate my funds somewhere else. Yes. I'm going to do my negative AM, but that's going to offset everything. And I'm going to be set fat. Mm -hmm. that, I'm going to be sitting fat, right? Yep. Not the general public, but the general public was getting that loan. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Every month, hell, I'd rather go on vacation, buy my new iPhone or do whatever. Yep. I'm going to send my cheapest payment in. Mm -hmm. So they were getting in trouble. So now. Dude, the, it's like giving a 16 year old who's never driven a stick shift. A fucking McLaren. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, like, hey, don't crash this. That is yeah. a great analogy. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. It's literally so, what it is. Shit hit the fan. If you guys watch the big short, I haven't. That All that happened. People mm -hmm. started losing their jobs, couldn't afford their mortgages. Yep. So we went down. Then the banks, they're smart. They are always back. They're not, they're not dumb people. What's your SVB? But they're, they, <laughs> <laughs> they, they started, anyway. they started, they, they started, <laughs> quote unquote for closing for closing mm -hmm. on home repo in the houses, right? So the REO market went skyrocketing. Yep. All these banks took the, their properties back, told you you need to get out, and I, I was an REO agent for, for some time. And on the a, thing on with the team. bank is the bank is not they're in not the gonna business lose. of owning real estate assets no. or managing. One, they, they, they don't want to be in the, in no, the real estate market. They do, they do, but they don't. Shout out to the board of realtors for keeping them out of yeah, our pockets. They, yep, yep. But they want to get rid of it and get their money back. They're into the investment land, right? right? So they're, they're, they're yeah, because they're, the whole, the whole point, of, and this is a good point. I just mm -hmm. want to 
clarifying, yeah, right? Absolutely. For what you guys are watching. So the reason the banks aren't interested in investing in real estate is because the entire business model of a bank is to take money from their borrowers mm -hmm. and then immediately be able to lend that out. Mm -hmm. If I'm a bank and I'm holding a real estate asset, I cannot quickly and easily take that equity out to then loan it to grow the business. Mm -hmm. And I like to use the, the example of the secondary market, right? Yeah. We're all yeah. banks here and I'm tapped out. I have $3 billion and it's right. all lent out, yep. but I'm making money on interest. Exactly. There's a, a, a new shiny investment over there that I want to get into. Mm -hmm. So I reach out to you too, and mm -hmm. you have, you have some liquidity, right? Mm -hmm. So I say, Hey guys, I have, I'm going to package this up. Yep. Um, who wants to buy it? Yep. Who, who needs to make money? You know, and if you have $3 billion to give out, you yep. buy my assets, you start making money on that. Now I freed up three billion to go, go invest over there. Yep. So there's a secondary market. That's why you close your deal. They sell your 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 loan. That's what that's what's happening behind mm -hmm. the scenes. Yep. And all of a sudden you're, you you were sending your and it happens whether you just closed yesterday or you you've had your loan for ten right. years. Um, you're sending your payment to Wells Fargo, for example, and then you get a letter in the bank that says you know you know what you're now sending your payment to M and T Bank. That's yep. what just happened. Yep. Okay. So let's go back. The bank. It's foreclosing on properties. People are losing their jobs. Um, mortgage insurance kicks in. Mm -hmm. So the banks not only picked up their asset, they put it back on the market, recoup some of that money. The insurance paid them out. And guess what? The financial sector holds the government by the balls. Mm -hmm. They said, help us out. Bail us out. Bailed them out. Got money from the government. Got money from the insurance. Got money from their assets back. So it was, a, it was pretty much a shit show there for a while. But the banks really didn't lose out. So... That is not going to happen because we've made some corrections. Those vehicles don't exist. The job market's pretty decent right now. Mm -hmm. And the LLPAs have nothing to do with any of that. Mm -hmm. So 2008 is not going to happen. Yeah. And, and I've been saying this since last year, yeah. since we started this podcast. Mm -hmm. by, by definition, we may or may not be in a recession now. Right. Yeah. We just can't fill it. Well, and, and again, the, the, another important fact, uh, you know, I touched on it earlier, but I really want to drive it home. And something that everybody, I feel like, is overlooking, especially when I talk to people, is that these LLPA adjustments happen every year. Mm -hmm. And they've been happening since... What, 2008, right? Yeah. So, in, in, in some way or another, they've been having yeah. it forever. But now, now let's think about it, okay? Now let's think about it. They announced this in January, and everybody went, what the hell are you talking about? No, we, we don't want this. And they're implementing it on May 1st. What, what's the number that starts with May? What, what's the date, right? Five. Five. How many months are there, are there in a year? Twelve. 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 So what you're telling me is you're only going to have to deal with this for half a year, mm -hmm. Okay. Hey guys, guess what? It changes. If it doesn't work, they'll change it again. Quick. Right? And, th and that's the whole thing. And on top of that, the other element of this that people don't talk about is with these changes, they also talked about changing the, the DTI to 40%, right? And in order to, to do that, what, what that means is your DTI at 40% will give you benefits of blah, 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 blah. They upped it, they changed it. Debt they, to income ratio. Yep. DTI. They are holding that out until August mm -hmm. eight out of 12. So now that's four months for that to go in. I'm sorry, but again, don't get scared by the headlines. If you read yeah. about it, if you learn about it. If you it, have money down, mm -hmm. it's not gonna affect you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, your DTI is, I mean, obviously yes, it'll, it will. It'll affect it'll you. It'll affect you, you but you could play if, with it a little bit. Well, yeah. and really, let's be honest, right? It'll affect you if you bought a property last year Mm -hmm. And you're mm -hmm. planning on buying another one after May 1st. And you're like, yep. wow, this is a different thing. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, it's just a number, yep. right? And mm -hmm. if, you go, if you guys go back, check out episode 22, mm -hmm. okay? Colin details debt to income and what it stands for. Yep. And one of the things that continues to come up, and, you know, I, Charlie, your friend said it. Well, we're not going to start giving loans to people that shouldn't actually qualify for a loan, mm -hmm. right? Again, so FHA has been doing two, it for years. Well, here, here you go, though. But there's two changes, and Charlie mm -hmm. just touched on it. DTI, okay? So DTI has always been a thing mm -hmm. over the last, call it 10 years or so, yep. for LLPAs. They've started to incorporate debt to income to evaluate how much you're going to pay yep. for a rate, right? When I think of people that shouldn't qualify for a loan, it's mm -hmm. somebody that has a very high debt to income ratio mm -hmm. that does not show quantifiable info that they can repay a loan on time. 
They have a right. lot of loans out and they haven't right. paid Shit ton of debt yet. and they just aren't good at paying it back. That's mm-hmm. high debt to income ratio, right? Yep. Or a shit ton of debt and they don't make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yes, those people, I'll be honest, you shouldn't buy a house. 100%. Yep. I'll tell you to rent every single time. But in LLPA specifically, what's going to happen is if your debt to income is over 40%, and you are borrowing more than 60% loan to value, which means you're putting down less than 40% Mm -hmm. down payment, less than 40% down payment, you're going to get charged more, which is going to deter those individuals from applying for a loan. The second thing that they're going to do, thank you, okay, (laughs) is the cash out refinance loans Mm -hmm. are also going to be more expensive. Why is that important? That is important because that directly affects investors, mm-hmm. specifically those that like to use what's called the Burr method yep. of buy, mm-hmm. rehab, rent, refinance, recycle, mm-hmm. right? Where they buy a property under value, they rehab it, they rent it out, they go to the bank and say, hey, I just made this property more valuable, I want to pull my money out and then I want to go buy another property, which directly speaks to the people that are like, well, all these people are buying all these investment mm-hmm. properties, blah, 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 blah the new LLPAs are now going to punish people that are doing cash out loans. Mm -hmm. So you've got two different things. One's attacking the investor side. The other one's attacking people that maybe shouldn't qualify for a loan. It's going to make it more expensive to negate those fears. Well, and, and for, for the folks out there that are saying, well, what if I want to pull money out? I'm going to be dinged. I just put out a TikTok the other day. Living in Colorado, the mile high perspective you we don't, also have something on Helox that Oscar you just don't did. have to refinance to tap nope. into your equity yep. or sell your house. Mm-hmm. You What's that called, a, Oscar? It's a home equity line of credit. Boom. It's a HELOC. Yep. Mm-hmm. I say it in the video. Go to your local credit union, your bank, or use your favorite lender. The all, here's, here's the thing, right? At the end of the day. And, and it's it, substantially cheaper. You and I, I think, actually, all three of us talked about it last week. So there was a statistic that came out that essentially tracks the percentage of available homes, single family mm-hmm. and multifamily in the United States yep. that are occupied by primary residence homeowners. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. The higher, the lower that number is, is going to dictate and kind of tell you how active investors are mm-hmm. in buying up those properties and renting them out. Last year, our, our historical average in the United States is about 62% mm-hmm. home ownership. Yep. Okay. So 62% mm-hmm. of residences in the United States are owned by primary homeowners. That's and just, for the general public, don't be mad at the investors. Call us. We'll make you one. Yes. Mm. But here's Ooh. the thing. Ooh. As we have seen, and I think this goes directly to Oscar's point mm-hmm. of this soapbox that people get. And yes. they can just spew information, right? You hear BlackRock. You hear Zilla. You hear Redfin. You hear investors. Mom and Pop investors. Landlords. Blah, blah, blah. All this different shit. Right? Oscar Ibarra. Everything. No. <laughs> Check this shit out. 62 is the historical average. Mm-hmm. Last year, okay, as all this BlackRock is going in and buying up entire, I saw an article. It's like BlackRock comes in and buys an entire subdivision somewhere in Texas, yep. right? Because they just couldn't sell the houses. So BlackRock bought like, I don't know, 75 single family homes, mm-hmm. right? And it was like, this is why I can't afford a house. Here's the thing. As of 2022, that historical average again, 62%. 2022, we were at 66% mm-hmm. of homes being owned as a primary residence. So home ownership has increased Mm -hmm. over the last decade, over historical averages, even though the headlines are saying that all these investors are coming in and buying and doing all these different things. What you guys have to understand is the banks, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, they benefit from people owning homes. So when you see these line level price adjustments, right? The goal is not to push people out of home ownership. Mm-hmm. The goal is to make it more affordable and more attainable for everybody. Yes. That's and to, what it and, is. And to touch on my, on my point, don't be pissed off at the investors. They're going to do what they're going to do regardless. Mm-hmm. You want to become an investor? Be one you, of those you don't, people. You don't, Talk ha- to us. you don't have to be BlackRock. No. It was like, it's a huge no. corporation. No. I'm never going to. No, no, no. Shout out to my buddy, Ed Hazlett. Okay, so just Ed just Hayes. Ed. He's a, he's a real estate agent too. Just he, Ed. He literally owned a few blocks in Scranton, Ohio. Just a man, uh, but he had investors. We'll, we'll we'll show you how to set it up. It, you don't have to be this big corporation that's just going to buy stuff. He what's literally the, at some uh, point. Hey, what's the adage? Don't hate the player, hate, hate the, the game. game. Well, okay, and, and if you want to learn how to play the game, talk Call us. to us. Well, and and here's the other thing too, right? Uh, another thing that that I want to point out is. 
Notice that they're talking about people with good credit scores that put 20% or more down on, on, their, on their loan, mm-hmm. right? Do me a favor. Look up what the average down payment is over the last years. I was going to say years, that. Right? Guys, don't, don't fall into the, oh my God, I don't have 20%. We've, we say it often The on majority this of the people that come and buy mm-hmm. houses for me at best is ten, uh, five to ten percent. Well, and, we and, 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 and I do a ton of first-time home buyers well, that yeah, yeah, come in with a thousand dollars. That's exactly my point. Is when you look at the heat map, yep. when you look at the graph, it is those people specifically, seven twenty to seven eighty, that put twenty percent down that will be affected the heaviest. Hey, if you don't want to be affected like that, put ten percent down. Also, if you are a person that has ever once tweeted Facebook status, personal conversation, phone conversation, text message, mm-hmm. complained. That we don't tax billionaires enough. <laughs> yes. You are not allowed mm-hmm. to get mad at the fact that higher qualified borrowers mm-hmm. are getting quote unquote taxed to subsidize well, home ownership for people that may not be in a good scenario. And let, me, and let me expand on what I just said, right? If you have a good credit score, put less down. Guys, please recognize that no matter what you do, the higher amount of a down mm-hmm. payment that you put on a loan the lower your monthly payments will be. So my question to you is, are you okay with putting 20 to 25% down and getting hit with eh, point, point, not one, point two five to point five five, Or would you rather not put 20% down and maybe be paying an extra $100 mm-hmm. on your loan because you didn't put the full 20 down? It's an eighth of a point to half a point. Ex- exactly. So like, so come on. It, it, please, again, they're, they're, they're driving it. I know the, 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 the titles are there, the, the, the headlines are there, but look into it. And I, I'm sorry, but financial literacy in the United States of America is one of the lowest. Sucks. It does. It, 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 they don't teach it. Well, and here's the deal. I, I ran these scenarios with one of our preferred well, lenders. Right? Before I forget, to touch on that, if, if, if you have not so good credit, talk to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll show you how. There's a reason people can I, get into it. We do. If, if you're place. not ready to buy right now, I'll set you up with a plan. Yeah, a good one. And so there yeah. has not been a scenario mm-hmm. that we have run where a 20 percent down payment borrower pays more per month or in closing costs than a six hundred and forty three and a half percent down borrower after these changes. And come that into change. is the golden nugget. Please like, repeat it again. So there is not a scenario that we have ran. Where if you're a 720 to 780 borrower with 20% down, that you are paying A, more in closing costs, B, more monthly than a 640 credit score with 3.5% down after these new changes. There's not. It does and, not exist. And 3, 3.5% is typically FHA. Does not yep. exist. Yep. And oh, by the way, if it is expensive, go FHA. Yeah. Absolutely. Look at they that. drop their mortgage insurance. Because guess what? LOPAs don't affect what? FHA. Mm-hmm. So if you, if it's... Talk to your lender, talk to your realtor, come up with a plan, run the numbers, put it on paper, and find out based on your monthly budget what your liquidity is, what makes sense for you as far as a path to go, because that is the beauty mm-hmm. of the products that we all have access to. And again, all these people all have always had the option yep. to go mm-hmm. FHA. Yep. So it's no one new. We're not getting people in here that don't deserve. You know what? Everybody. And, Everybody and I'll say, I will say home. it with my head held high, 20 years in the hey. business. Everybody deserves to have to quote, a home. To quote Kevin Hart, say it with your chest. Say it with your chest. I'm not going to. Everybody. <laughs> everybody deserves. Everybody deserves to have a home. Everybody, everybody deserves everybody. home ownership. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's, it's, our, it's our American right. And yep. you know what the funny part is of all this, right? Is that the individuals that are in a really good position to purchase mm-hmm. a home, yes, up front, initial cost at closing will affect them mm-hmm. negatively. But the more affect people Affect them with an get, A or affect them with an E? Ooh. Uh, a, definitely an A. Boom. Alpha, because we're alphas. Anyway, oh, <laughs> continue. Uh, it benefits you guys mm-hmm. because if I can get more people into homes, okay, property values rise. It's it's supply and demand. I was going to touch on that. <laughs> I mean, is it <laughs> really going to affect? Bro. Is it really going to affect you? Because I got to pay an extra nine hundred dollars at closing, but that means that my property values in my neighborhood might go up like I don't know, fifteen grand in the next ten years. Let me clarify because of that. Let, let me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me like, clarify not. something. Let mm-hmm. me clarify something. People that have that much money down typically haven't saved that money. They're selling mm-hmm. their home. Exactly. They're transferring equity. Equitable. So yes. you know what? You're playing with money that. 
Yes, you earned because you made a, a, a mm -hmm. great financial decision, but it's part of the game. And again, yep. let's say so, you so are maybe the person, you lose out some money, right. but it's money that you gained yep. with, with the market. Or, mm -hmm. or you are the person that did save diligently for 20% down. And, and if now you did, you I commend you. So yes, Damn it, you know that's what? Good. Here's the deal. What do we say? 0. 0.275 to 0. 0.375. Yep. A tenth of a percent of a loan. I'm not going to do the math. You guys can fucking do it. But Eighth let's percent. say it's 1500 extra dollars at closing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But because of that, you've subsidized other people to move into that neighborhood mm -hmm. to buy houses during a supply shortage. And now over the next three to five years, that $1,500 that you gave up or had to put on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. a check, a wire transfer, whatever, now has helped your neighborhood's median home value jump $20,000 mm -hmm. over you gain the next money. five years. You're telling me that if I gave Oscar or you, mm -hmm. hey, here's 1500 bucks, you give me 1500 in five years, I'll give you twenty thousand. Who doesn't take that deal? Yeah. Not only, not exactly. only that. Initially, up front, you're you're pissed off because you're paying fifteen hundred bucks. But guess what? The buyer pool just opened up for your house. Yes. Now they're gonna bid your house up. You may mm -hmm. have lost fifteen hundred, but guess what? You might have gained ten to fifteen thousand. Exactly. exactly. I will take that deal in Vegas. Every hundred percent. Fucking every day. time. Every day. Every well, time. And and I'll 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 be honest, guys. This is. I think this has turned into a wonderful conversation. I fucking loved it. Right. It was. This is really good. Um, I don't know what I was getting into. Right, guys. To our, to our listeners, to our, to our watchers, thank you guys for, honestly, to, to the public, thank yep. you for, for having such an outcry because I learned so much. Oh, dude, in the as, last soon as, three days. as soon as we saw the headlines, like, we have to do yeah, an episode. We have to on do this. it, we right? Have to. But I think this is a good time to move into our One Rock Takeaways for today's yep. episode. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let Jameson start it. Um, I am going to say my rock takeaway is headlines are there for attention. So make sure that you reach out to the people that can give you the information or do it yourself and understand the facts, mm -hmm. understand the perception, everything else that comes behind the headline. Because if you see something that says, if you're a good credit borrower, you're gonna, it's going to cost you $40 more a month because you did good at your job. When in reality, listen to the beginning of this podcast, that's not at all true. Okay, mm -hmm. but people understand it's marketing, right? People mm -hmm. know that we have the attention span of a mosquito. And if we see something that's clickbaity, we're going to click on it and we're going to read it. Maybe we'll read like a tenth of it and then mm -hmm. we'll form our own opinions. Just understand that you guys have resources. Reach out to us. If you see something, go, dude, this, this can't be real. Reach out. Mm -hmm. We can walk you through it. Yep. 100%. Reach out. Definitely. Reach out because... And this is, I don't know you wanna, if I, hey, I, don't know if I was hey, going to be the next one take or not. It, take I'm it, it is now. I'm taking the rock. Um, reach out to us. Uh, I, I have clients that something tweaks on, on their, their monthly statement. They call me. It's, it, we're not going to be like, oh, pff, come on, you should know. No, we're not going to do that. Hell no. Call me and I will straighten it out. Yep. My one rock takeaway is it's, it's not very possible or it, it's not going to happen that something absolutely brand new is going to come to the market in essence if something new comes up it's it's not new it's happened in the past mm -hmm. these things history repeats itself they're just trying to stimulate and or mm -hmm. make the market a little more attractive or or whatever the case may be but with the clickbait no one no one likes boring news they want some. They want something sexy. They want. They want something that's gonna, you know, uh, stir up the masses. They want a man in a smoker's cap and some aviators. Okay. That's right. That's what it is. Damn and, and, right. Um, that's what's real, gonna catch your, quick, your attention. Real quick, I think this is super important because Oscar's right. History repeats itself. However, mm -hmm. in the housing market, I need you guys to understand that does not mean that 2008 is going to repeat itself, mm -hmm. right? Because rewind this about. 15, we minutes. learn from our mistakes. The banks do not, nobody benefits of a housing market crash mm -hmm. or an economic crash or recession. History may repeat itself. Things may get repackaged, but new guidelines, new incentives, stop it from, from happening new again. limitations mm -hmm. will stop it from going back. To Even the if the banks did benefit back then, yep. it was a big fucking headache. Exactly. Yep. It was a big fucking headache. They don't want it. The, the, the government lost. We all lost. Consumers Everybody lost. lost. Yep. I lost my ass off back then. Well, and, so, and I think on that note, it leads very well into my one rock takeaway. Hey guys, what, what happened in 2020 that's never happened or only happened once before in the United States in world history? Was it, was it a worldwide pandemic? Well, we got the Spanish right? flu back in the day. But, but. but to my point, 
we had a worldwide pandemic that yes. affected the entire world and shut down economies, right? I wanted to talk about COVID too. Now, we're not out of time, but you're absolutely right. right. Now, we're, we had people who started businesses. We had people who were affected by this that couldn't work. These are the people that this is helping. Mm -hmm. These are the people, they're trying to help those people who suffered throughout the pandemic. Let's help them that are now, right? That are now coming out of it. And on top of that, for, I don't know how it happened. I don't know when it happened, but we've forgotten that humans are an altruistic species. We stand on the backs of the giants that came before us, right? We have what we have, all of this, because we have helped each other mm -hmm. move forward and get there. When we were in caves, we had one group of people that stood outside at night and watched our backs, and during the day, same group of people. What would happen if those people at night said, hey, screw you, I want, I want to sleep, I don't want to be awake. We wouldn't be here, mm -hmm. all right? I understand. When you hear the word socialism, when, when, that's what everybody goes to. That's, that's their key point that they're going to grab you. I'm helping somebody who's worse than me? Well, this is far from socialism. Right? It's not the but, same thing. But that's my point. We got here by helping each other. Do you guys pay taxes? Exactly. So please depend recognize on, that. Depending on who you ask. HOA? Where, where, it might, where it might be a situation where you're yeah. going, oh, I did my work and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, doing, I'm helping them. My question to you is, why is that a problem? Look in the mirror and ask yourself a question. Why is it a problem to help other people? And in the grand scheme of things, that's not even what this is. You're not paying for these people with lower credit scores to do better. We're just giving them more of an opportunity. So get off your high horse and understand that we're here to help each other. And it's the only way that we're going to grow and move forward. You said a whole lot. I did. Because I, I, I am that individual. I have earned every goddamn mm -hmm. penny I have I, I earned it. No one's giving me shit. Mm -hmm. and I'm the, but I love everyone. That's I, I mean, I, home ownership should be for everyone. We only. I we love will, you guys all, but I am the guy that says, you know what? Nothing was given to me. I have fought, scratched, and screamed every dime that I own. Mm -hmm. But if it's for the greater good, let's go. Damn right. Well, and I think let's it's, go. it, it, it goes right. back to that, right? You can, like, I, I've scratched and clawed, but I've also had support from mm -hmm. a multitude of individuals that if they weren't there to, do something that didn't necessarily benefit them, but helped me, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in mm -hmm. 100%, right? And from a society standpoint, at some point we have to get back to that. You yes, would think, right? 100%. Because at this point we are so individualistic. It's unsustainable. It's unsustainable. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, you know, uh, you can do studies on Japanese culture, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where it's the, it's the collective, right? Yep. doesn't mean that there's not ultra successful people in that culture, mm -hmm. but... I've always said that if you, to raise all boats, you have to ra raise the tide, mm -hmm. right? That's it. doesn't yeah. matter what the boat is. Somebody's got to raise the tide. Mm -hmm. And Just my plea is, in. like, help us raise the tide. Yep. That's it. Exactly. Raise the exactly. tide. As soon as we start thinking individually, like me, like, like me, 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 only mm -hmm. me, we start to crumble. Yes. Mm -hmm. We bring in the masses, we're stronger. Sorry. Together we stand. It is in literally it's the American Anybody way. Watch the movie <laughs> it's the American <laughs> way. But it's it, exactly it, like that's what we're based on is yes. together. We we work together. I don't know where the separation came from, but please, guys, just we're, we're all one team here. We're all trying to, to get to the better good. Um, and on that note, shout out to our military. Yeah, I mm -hmm. love the military. Without you guys, we couldn't be here. And yep. you touched a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. Let's think about it that way. And on that note, guys, sorry I got a little bit of heavy on you guys there. I, I do apologize. No, I'll give you. I, I'll give you his address <laughs> if you want to go kick his right. ass. <laughs> yeah, come come for it. And please, again, comment. Come for me. I would love to have that conversation with anybody. Help each and other out. We will Same. beat you guys, with love. Literally help each other out. No, yes. yeah, um, we're here to help. We're here to help. Mm -hmm. We're here to educate. If you're pissed off, call us. Maybe we'll piss you off more, but we're going to give you the truth. Yep. Um, or maybe we'll diffuse it and say, hey, look, this is how you mm -hmm. can benefit from this. Yep. And speaking of things that help the collective. Whiskey? Whiskey, Alcohol? baby, bourbon. Right? I love me. <laughs> I got my bourbon socks on. Uh, yes, yes. Oscar, hold on. I, I, I'm going to pause it. Oscar, show him the bottom. Show him the bottom of the socks. Oh, man. So if I ever pass out and you read this, mm -hmm. if you could read this, bring me some whiskey or bourbon. <laughs> I don't even know. I can't see the bottom of my feet. That's it's awesome, bro. guys. Uh, um, ultimately, starting off, you know, we'll, we'll with moving into the bourbon review. I, I can see why Woodford is a, is a staple. Mm -hmm. I, I will I will say that I can see Tasty. why this is a bottle that most every bar carries, and they do consider it 
a little bit a little bit higher on the, on the totem pole um, on their shelves. Which again, like mortgages, I will tell you what the better ones on the lower price is, yep. but this is all around a good one. Yes. I love mm-hmm. this bourbon. Well, and it comes down to the history too, right? And, and again, Woodford, like we said, 1812, that's a long brand. That's Kentucky a long Derby, time. baby. Mm-hmm. It survived a war. Yeah. <laughs> you and your fucking war, man. Stuck on Just saying. War, man. It's a war of 1812. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> It, it fucking you know, right? history nerd, and and so it, I honest, honestly, three like, things. <laughs> I can see, I can see how this became a staple because when you have something that that is like this, where when you pour it out, you, you're gonna get you, you're gonna get a good taste, dude. From it. I, yeah, right. And I can see how this has become a staple. Has it? How this has become? I, for me, like I said, it, honestly, if I didn't think Jack, like if I if I thought whiskey bourbon and a Jack bottle didn't pop into my head. Woodford would be the next one to pop in. That the shape of the bottle, the name, all of it. Um, so, so I am excited to, to rate this one, specifically because, again, I think that this being a very public and well-known bourbon, I, I think this this there's a reason for that. Um, so I'll go ahead and start it off with our uh, our, our rock rating. Um, let me go ahead and get one more sip in here because I got to get that little last last one in before I give the final. Yeah. I just poured me a whole nother pour, so I'm going to be sipping this for a little bit. So I, I think, in all honesty, I, I'm going to go down the same route that I did last week. I'm going to give this one a four. It does have a little bit more complexity than uh, what we drank last week as far as the flavors and the notes changing through the, the High viewers, West. What did we drink last week? High West. That's right. Right. That one was a very only two-year. It had an amazing flavor. But the complexity to the flavor wasn't too deep. Correct. Yes. I will say that I, I, I gave that one a five. I'm going to give the Woodford a four specifically because there is some complexity. You do get the sip at the beginning, and the flavors do change as, as you're drinking it. Um, overall, like I said, I see why this is a standard bourbon. This mm-hmm. is definitely something that if you've been drinking Jack and you can handle that. If you've been drinking Jack, you got some issues, man. Well, yeah, call me. on the podcast. We'll right? educate you. <laughs> yeah. right? well, Jack belongs in Coke. Look at the wall. <laughs> exactly. Look at the wall. But this is definitely something, and I can see why. If someone's drinking Jack and they're sitting at a bar, yeah, and they they're find you know, they, they get a little, they get a little mm. feather tickle, and they go, you know what, I want a little bit something more. I can one hundred percent see why this is the bourbon that they're given. Because if you can handle the burn and the the, bl- I don't want to say bland, but the, the 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 stagnant taste of Jack, and then you ask it's for a, a sour, good, sour right? fucking mash, and then you ask for a good bourbon, and you get this, you will see a significant difference between the two for sure. Mm-hmm. Who wants to okay. go next? I'll go next. Okay. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say I, I hate that you use Jack because Jack is – I love me some Jack Daniels, Jack and Cokes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll go, to a, I'll go to a restaurant. Everybody knows I am an old-fashioned snob. <laughs> if you don't make it to my standards, I will send that shit back and get a Jack and Coke because you can't fuck up a Jack and Coke. Okay. Love me some Jack and Coke. But Jack is not – you shoot that shit. You don't mm-hmm. sip on Jack. I mean, and if you're sipping on Jack, you're fucking hardcore. I don't know. I'm Frank sorry. Sinatra might be punching through the. Thing yeah, no, I have some. No, no, you. no. I have some Jack, Frank Sinatra Jack. So, Mickey Blue Eyes hasn't yeah. been on this podcast, so he can shut the fuck <laughs> up. No, no, no. See, and he's dead. But his Frank, the Frank Sinatra Jacks, oh, Jack yeah, Daniels, select, it's mm-hmm. a whole nother level. Oh, I have one at home. It is yeah, by far different. better than this. Very I'll tell you that much. Very it's different. a different animal. Same mm-hmm. with the Eric Church one. Oh, I have yeah. I have not tasted it. Um, anyway, oh, that's yeah, another podcast. Woodford, right? mm-hmm. yep. Love me some Eric Church. Mm-hmm. If he's watching. If, you watch, okay, if Eric Church is watching, <laughs> dude, we, we made it. To, good, we man. made it to big time. Uh, so I got a guitar behind Oscar's <laughs> head. Can you please come here and just do like a I would live love acoustic that. set? A little ditty. I will. Ditty I will. I will geek out if Eric Church oh walks in that here. So, <laughs> that would be awesome. So fucking cool. Anyway, uh, with me, uh, Woodford. Even though I was talking shit that most bars have it like top shelf, mm-hmm. I have to say that it's it's a well rounded. I enjoy this bourbon, and I'm going to give it actually a better rating than you. I'm going to give it a three because it's in there in the mix with everybody. Nice. It, if you buy it at the at the liquor store, it's it's great price. It lends itself to to sip on like we mm-hmm. did, mm-hmm. and all bourbon. It doesn't matter how you drink it. Bourbon will take it however you want it. Yep. But this bourbon right here makes great mint juleps. I love the Kentucky mm-hmm. Derby. Um, I think this year I'm going to go buy me a Silver Sucker. I, I love the Kentucky nice. Derby. I, nice. It's a thing at my house. You would think because I'm brown and Cinco de Mayo. Hell no. It's, <laughs> it's the Kentucky Derby. I mean, most of the horses and, are brown, so I guess that makes sense. And this is it the works. bourbon. This is the bourbon that I think of K- Kentucky Derby. So it, it lends itself a little bit more 
to me than just any bourbon. Yeah. Um, I enjoy it a lot. It, it, it's the complexity, the, it, it lends itself to whatever you want to make with it. I'm going to give it a three. Hell yeah. I, I like love that. this bourbon. I like that. It's one of, it's one of my favorites, um, and, and you'll find it at any bar. Yeah. You definitely will. Just don't pay 20 bucks for a pour because just no. walk the fuck out. No. Ask for a Jack and Coke. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take a little different route. I am going to classify this as the gateway bourbon, like a gateway drug. Yeah. But bourbon. It's the gateway. It is because. It's the weed of the bourbons? Both of you guys have said. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. In, okay, I got to be careful with this. Not saying that harder drugs are better. However, <laughs> your mom's going to watch this podcast and judge you. I'm not saying that, like, you. drink Woodford and all of a sudden you're going to be in the fentanyl. But my point is that this is number you're one. <laughs> Jack and Coke and not the Coca Cola. <laughs> It's it's that I, I it's a bridge bourbon mm-hmm. where like if you're a Jack drinker or maybe a Basil Hayden's Jim or maybe Beam, a Wild man. Turkey like even Jim Buffalo Trace even bu- yeah mm-hmm. you drink this and I think you start to appreciate you go wow bourbon has a little bit more to offer than I thought mm-hmm. so I now, think this is the entry if, level of good bourbon yes, yes. it's yes. the gateway drug exactly. of bourbon that's, that's my point right yes. so okay. I'm gonna go in between you guys you. I'm gonna say three and a half for a couple reasons number one I think splitting hairs it. Well, I think it appeals to really anybody that's ever drank whiskey before, mm-hmm. okay? It's not super complex like a smoke wagon, yep. but it's not a Jack Daniels, like, you know what you're it's getting not an at an H&H. You know what I mean? <laughs> we don't talk about H&H. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> but if you drink this and you, you go, hmm, what else is out there? Mm-hmm. I think that's this because it's also affordable. Yep. You go to a bar Right, it's probably nine dollars for a pour. I would say yeah. nine, for the most nine, part, nine to thirteen. Right, yeah. somewhere mm-hmm. around there, so, and you can sit there and say, you know, I'm going to experiment. I want it neat. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's not overpowering, like we talked about. The burn mm-hmm. isn't there, so you're not going to sip it and go, oh my god, put this a cube is in crazy, it. Crazy, right? If, if you're not used to the burn, put a cube in. Yeah, it. which Absolutely. is fine. But my point is, you can either cube or no cube. Mm-hmm. It'll get you to the point where you go, well, wait a second. If this is nine, then this. You know, Blanton's this Eagle Rare, this E.H. Taylor, whatever yep. it is. Why is that 17? Mm-hmm. If I can handle this, I can now handle that. So that's Absolutely. why that's why I'm going to classify it. It gets as, you curious. It's a gateway bourbon. Yep. I really do believe that this is like the mm-hmm. thing that people should buy if yep. they want to start experimenting mm-hmm. and tasting higher end bourbons. Try this. Yep. See what you guys think. The complexity's there. The burn's there, but it's not overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you if you taste this and you go, you know what? After a couple of pours... This is actually really fucking good. I'm, uh, in all honesty, I, I now that I drink this, I really want to go back and drink the Jack Daniels single barrel. Yes. Only because I had the same reaction between the two bourbons when I first tried them. I'm like, hey, this is too much. Yep. Now I, now I want to go back and try it. Because like I said at the beginning of this episode, when he brought me this bourbon, I was like, hell yeah, this, I know this is a good bourbon. But the last time I had it, mm-hmm. I couldn't handle it. I, I didn't know enough. I didn't drink enough. Yeah. This, bourbon, this bourbon holds its own. It like it's, it's in mm-hmm. a weird category. Yeah. I, I hold this with a Templeton Rye. Mm-hmm. Uh, bookers, yes. you yes. know, it, yep. it's it's a weird the old forcer uh, Angels, statesman Angels the other day. Envy? Yes, it, it's a yes. weird it's a weird category that this fits into. Yep. But again, so Angel, Angels Envy, perfect example, yep. right? This and Angel Envy, very similar. Mm-hmm. Angels Envy is thirty dollars more expensive. Yep, one hundred percent. Their rye is like hard to find. Exactly. Yep. So, Absolutely. and to Oscar's point, would make an old fashioned out of it. Oh yes. hell Mint yeah, 100%. whatever. Like it's it's great with mixed drinks. Yes. So I, I'm, that's I'm, I'm going to throw a Kentucky Derby if yeah, uh, party at my house. Come see me. We'll I, think have some a, I think it's a gateway, mm-hmm. a gateway bourbon. Hell so, yeah. I like it. I think, awesome, guys. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a phenomenal episode. Right? This hey, is a real good listen, episode. Listen, thank you guys for sticking with us. Uh, real quick, Oscar, where can people find you on social media? OscarTheRealtor.com or OscarTheRealtor. Um, kind of screwed the pooch there. Or Oscar. The realtor.co. So Oscar the Realtor, and then it's either CO yeah, or TikTok, com. Instagram, Facebook. All of them. All of them. Charlie, mm-hmm. what about you? That lifting agent or the lifting agent? Because I love fitness and I love helping people buy houses. And he Beautiful. likes Reese's Pieces. And because I live in Colorado and I love real estate, I am the Colorado real estate guy Boom. on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Jameson Amros, obviously. And once again, guys, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening via podcast, like, comment, subscribe, leave us a review. Let us know how we're doing. It'll help us grow the channel, allow us to reach more individuals. Yep. If you guys want to get hold of us via phone, 303-578-0263. If you guys want to reach us via email, R-E-S-O-T-R at themilehighperspective.com. It'll be on the screen. Please like, follow, and subscribe. Let us know what you guys think. Yep. And, uh, you know, we, we, we enjoyed this episode. And it was thank great. you guys so much yep. for, for the reactions that you had to these headlines because I learned a shit ton. 
and I'm very grateful. So All right. on that note, cheers, cheers, boys. Cheers. Have a great week. We'll catch you next one.